afternoon and welcome to the latest segment of Voices from Our Schools. I'm Kimberly Stender. I'll be your host today. And joining me, we have two exceptional guests from Amherst Regional High School. With me today are John Bechtold. Hello, John. Hi. John is the department head of the performing arts at Amherst Regional High School and Middle School. And his student, Miguel Paredes. Paredes? Paredes, yeah. Paredes, that's beautiful. I like how you say it. <laughs> Thank you. And Miguel is a rising senior at the high school who mm -hmm. has been heavily involved in the uh, performing arts throughout your time here in Amherst. So I'm thrilled to have you both on as guests. And um, we're excited to uh, let the community know all the great things that you're doing uh, in the schools and around the community. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So, John, let's start with you. Um, you came to Amherst High School um, many years ago, short Many time years ago. ago, I guess, at this point. Uh, fall of 1999, which was right after my May of 1999 college graduation. So oh. I went right from college into, into this mix, which was pretty fun. And you, did you start out as an instructor in the Performing Arts Department, or did you immediately become... The head honcho. Uh, no, in fact, the performing arts department didn't yet exist. It was the music department at the time, and I was hired as an English teacher, and that's where my certification and background was. And theater was kind of the thing I did on the side, and performing arts was this thing that was always in my life. But I had gone into teaching to be an English teacher. So I taught several years of English at the high school mm -hmm. uh, and then began to align myself more and more with John Worthen, who was the drama director at the time and also an English teacher. And then he and I started to realize that we had a really good thing going together. So we got more and more integrated with our work. We started directing and co-directing things. And at the same time, uh, the music department was looking to expand. Dave Rainin was the department head at the time and was part of a vision to expand the program, not just to include music, but dance and theater as well in the mm -hmm. curricular day. And it was maybe just a matter of good timing, but at that moment I had also taken over the school musical, and Dave approached me and asked me if I'd be interested in starting the theater program here in, a, in the curriculum of the school. Well, that's really fortuitous, and it's great that you're here now. Oh, it's worked out really well. <laughs> okay. And it was an Amherst High School student that got me here in the first place. Oh, tell us about that. Well. I, I went to college in Maine at Bates College, mm -hmm. and one of my best friends early on uh, was someone by the name of Addie Fletcher, and the Fletchers still live in Shutesbury and went to the schools, and Addie graduated the same year as me in high school, uh, 1995. I grew up in upstate New York, and we met in college. Addie and I became fast friends. She quickly taught me how to throw a forehand uh, <laughs> as far as Frisbees go and introduced me to the sport of ultimate. Mm -hmm. And I played ultimate uh, at the college with Addie for a bunch of years, and through that, and through I think a lot of just mutual interest, we, we stayed fast friends. Mm -hmm. And it was senior year, and we were in our extra term just before graduation. And I remember checking my email in the library, and we would get all these emails from the career center, just kind of generic invitations to apply for financial jobs in New York, things like that. Mm -hmm. And then out of the blue, for the first time, because we get these emails all the time, this public school in Massachusetts popped up on the radar, and Addie, who was looking over my shoulder, said, oh my god, that's my high school. You need to apply there. And I kind of shrugged and said, sure, I, I would love to be in a college town, and <laughs> that's where Emily Dickinson's from, right? And that was that. And then I, I showed up here, and everything clicked into place really fast after that. So they recognized in you these star-studded qualities <laughs> that have got you here today. <laughs> well, or that or they fell for it. Well, that's true, too. I think they, I think they recognized your potential and your strengths, and we're just really thrilled to have you here with us. I know my kids, well, one of my ch children has taken a couple courses with yes, you. Yes, right now even. And he enjoys it. And I, from what I hear, Miguel, I'm sure you can back me up on this, mm -hmm. is that, you know, Mr. Bechtold here is kind of a... Um, he has a cult following at the oh, high school. Definitely. Yeah, people really look up to you, John, and um, it's just, it's really nice to have teachers like you in our in our system. Well, the feeling's still very reciprocal. It's really great. Wow. So, and and this family that you were close with at Bates, you're, I'm yeah, the Fletchers. guessing that you're very still you're still close with. Yeah, I still one. get to run into them here and there. Mm -hmm. They they usually make it out and see the musical every year, and I I try to go out to shoot and see them when that's possible too. So that's great. Yeah. It's all about community. Absolutely. <laughs> So when you became um, involved in the, in the department and you were looking to expand it into the dance and to the musical and, and, um, and, the, and the vocal, how did you go about doing this? Was it hard to get support and funding to expand the department? 
No, I, I think we are at a time uh, in the schools where we are a little more flush and mm -hmm. looking to really expand the offerings at the school. I think it didn't hurt that around the same time PVPA was, was coming into its own down the street and making mm -hmm. a strong case for how powerful the arts can be, especially the performing arts, uh, in the school world and, and how they tie to the curricular world, how they advance students, both personally and also academically. Mm -hmm. So we were seeing this, I think, coming just down the way, and we realized that we had the facilities and the capability to do this here at the school. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't very involved in the administrative level conversations that brought in that program. Mm -hmm. I was lucky enough to be asked to be one of the people to start something along as it, as it got going. Mm -hmm. So when Dave tapped me and said, hey, do you want to go out sometime this summer and, and talk about what an acting class would look like or what a stagecraft mm -hmm. class would look like, I, I went for it very quickly and we, we sat down and, and had a good run of it and started to realize that it was a pretty rich thing here. At the same time, that was happening for dance as well. Mm -hmm. And over time, it, it got so seamless that it, it's hard to think now the department uh, as it was then because the I think one of the things that's really come around in the, this amount of time is the amount of collaboration and connection across our department with our staff and with our mm -hmm. programs as they interact. Yeah, very strong staff. Yes. Many and of whom I know and admire. I think we're very lucky. I think we have a truly remarkable staff mm -hmm. and it's easy to say that about your own colleagues but I, I, I think I could stand back from a greater distance and still really find just a lot to believe in in our school. Mm -hmm. And so committed. Absolutely. I, so I, we're committed. often the first cars there and the last cars out. Yes, yes. I remember when Anita Cooper did the musical in your absence. Yes. And she was putting in 20 hour days. Oh, absolutely. Weeks. And it, it takes, I, I think, a lot of commitment to, to do this kind of work because it, it can't be constrained to a school day, whether mm -hmm. it's the musical, whether it's a singing ensemble, whether it's a dance ensemble. It becomes a community. It becomes a way of going about your life. Mm -hmm. And I think that's true for the teachers. And I think that's true for the students, too. Mm -hmm. You agree, Miguel? Oh, yes, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, Miguel, actually, I would love to hear some of your thoughts on this because in some ways you're such a good kind of uh, test case for someone that came in the school uh, without a lot of direction um, and then you know, started to find your way with us. I, how did you start and, and why did you stay? All right. Uh, well, let's see. Freshman year, I had Bomba, and it was because some of my uh, like my mom's friends' daughters who were seniors, going to be seniors, were like, "Oh, take Boma; it's one of the best classes." So I took it, and that's what really started to get me into the performing arts program. Because from there, Tracy was like, "Oh, you should try out for the musical because you like to sing," and I was like, "Okay." So that's when I met Mr. Bechtold, and that's when I met Anita Cooper, mm -hmm. and then I was lucky enough to get like you know like a small role freshman year, and then like. It's when I, that's when I first met like the seniors and they're like these superstars that could like <laughs> sing really well and they were just like really nice people mm -hmm. and it was, it was really awesome just to see how, I guess, comfortable they are in, 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 in the, you know, in the space that we always work in, like the auditorium or the choral, choral space and it, it really just, it got me hooked the second I was in it and then like from the musical I was like, I want more. I want more and I just like I kept on coming back for auditions and I kept on singing and I signed up for chorale and ever since then I've been part of chorale and you know I've just I've just been trying to take as much as I can in and it's really just great mm -hmm. I love it I can see the joy on your face and the pride in your work you know and it's, it's thrilling to hear that you know so a young adult like yourself and this has really propelled you to a different part in your life that you might not have anticipated going into high school Oh, yes, definitely. That the dramatic arts, performing arts would be such a big component in your life. And has it helped with academics? Is it, has it provided a nice balance for you? Yes. Um, it really it taught me some, like, really good skills. Like, mm -hmm. I always wanted to work hard in theater, and I had to really apply that to school. And mm -hmm. it also gave me a great idea of managing my time, because I always, like, you know, I was like, I have rehearsal, so I have to finish my homework now. Mm -hmm. And it's great because usually during rehearsals, if we're not doing anything, Mr. Beck told Anita, or Anita or Tracy's always like, take out your homework, that way you can finish it, that way you can go to bed. And they always tell us to go to bed early and yes. all that kind of stuff. And um, it's, it's great. I um, Life that you might not have anticipated going into high school. Oh yes, definitely. That the dramatic arts, performing arts would be such a big component in your life. And has it helped with academics? Is it, has it provided a nice balance for you? Yes. Um, it really, it taught me some like really good skills. Like mm -hmm. I always wanted to work hard in theater and I had to really apply that to school. And mm -hmm. it also gave me a great idea of 
managing my time because I always like you know I was like I have rehearsal so I have to finish my homework now mm -hmm. and it's great because usually during rehearsals if we're not doing anything Mr. Bechtold and or Anita or Tracy's always mm -hmm. like take out your homework that way you can finish it that way you can go to bed and they always tell us to go to bed early and yes. all that kind of stuff and um, it's it's great I um, I also I've made a lot of friends through the performing arts and mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of the performing arts kids they, they really take school seriously a lot of my friends and stuff we all we all really want to do really well in everything so it's great well I, I know that it's, it's almost proven that if you play an instrument or are involved in singing or, or, or dance that you know it is linked to success in the classroom there's certainly a, a strong correlation there and you're right there's a lot of studies that have talked about that and and all the performing arts uh, have been followed that way I, and I think that's so uh, obvious when you when you start to put a few things together when you think about um, uh, a music concert, say we're at a symphonic orchestra concert, mm -hmm. and um, you know, actually, let me step away from that second. Say you take a physics test and you get an A minus on it, you get a ninety-three percent. You say to yourself, "Well, that's that's pretty great. Ninety-three percent is really solid." You go to a symphonic orchestra concert and ninety-three percent of the notes are right. That's a terrible concert. Mm. And for us in the performing arts, I think the standards have to be because of the nature of what we do so high that there's an easy incursion over into academics to carry that same idea that 93% isn't really quality mm -hmm. when you're aiming for 100. And mm -hmm. that mentality can carry over very easily, I think, across the arts and into the rest of the school. And the talent that you have in your students is remarkable. I think it's, it's unparalleled. It really is. I've never seen before. Oh, it, and you always think you're going to get used to it. And then another class comes through, and they wow you with, with a new set of skills. Mm -hmm. uh, it's incredible. I've been here 13 years now. And, I, I am not remotely uh, used to the level of skill that we see. It's one of the real privileges, I think, of working and, and being in this community. And it starts young. You start in the elementary schools. You, know, you have your music programs mm -hmm. and your little shows that they do. But there's definitely a through line. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it really builds from there. If we didn't have the foundation in the elementaries, I mean, they're, they're the bedrock on which our program is built. And mm -hmm. it's, I think, through the tremendous efforts of their work mm -hmm. uh, that has really that gives us the chance to kind of reap the rewards of that foundation. Right. So you have Lori Rabu, who just yep, retired. Who's, who's just oh. retiring this year after <laughs> years and years of, of running uh, an instrumental, a strings program that's been so strong and jumping mm -hmm. across all the elementaries. Um, we've been really, really lucky. Lori's there, Sue Dunbar is there. They've mm -hmm. been two of the bigger mainstays, but we have a, yeah. a big staff that feeds us so well into the, mm -hmm. into the middle and high school. Right, and then you have Dave Rainin. Yes, who really see. anchors uh, the middle school, mm -hmm. uh, the choral program there that feeds in the high school choral program. And then we have Laura Rexroth and Ben Peterson, yes. who are both uh, running the full 712 spectrum on that. Mm -hmm. And I think all of us are in strong agreement that we need a strong through line, like you said, that mm -hmm. begins in the elementary and brings students through. But that also laterally, that we can find uh, places for students like Miguel, who you know, entered into music theater, then found his way into more direct theater, and then into distinctive music programs, and now is taking a dance class, you know, this term. <laughs> um, we want to be able to go wide and deep. Mm -hmm. And how do you see yourself doing that in terms of our budget? And is there room for more classes in the arts? Well, fortunately, we're really well supported by the administration here. Yes. And while there's any number of things, I think we're always chomping at the bit for more classes that we'd like to teach. We're constantly talking about new ways of, of bringing things mm -hmm. together. Even with what we have right now, as long as we're all running at full capacity as teachers mm -hmm. in terms of our status at the school, we have a pretty strong program that's very interested in feeding off of each other. Yes. And that gives us the opportunity to, to take things really far with students. Mm -hmm. In fact, you did a lot of um, collaborative concerts this year. Yes. And that was quite remarkable. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? That would be great. I mean, and that was a, a deliberative decision. We realized at one level that audience members uh, would tend to go see their own children, of course, but might not have enough incentive to see the other things that the school does and therefore might not even know. But the second you take the symphonic orchestra and put them next door to the chorale mm -hmm. uh, and then the wind ensemble all on the same night, you have all these people coming in uh, and two-thirds of the performance is, is really fresh to them. In mm -hmm. addition to seeing their kid, they can see the kind of panoply of, of stuff that we're offering in, in one go. Mm -hmm. And it also gives us a reason to collaborate with each other. So if you take one of the annual events we do, um, which is on, often an annual symphonic work that includes a chorus. This mm -hmm. year is the Pergolesi Magnificat. Mm -hmm. Miguel was involved in that, so you could talk a little bit about, what, I mean, who was involved in that? What did that look like? Um, well, all the kids that take a chorus class are in it, which is uh, Hurricane Singers, Chorale, and um, Concert Choir. So they're all in it, which is about, like, 
I think like a hundred kids or, or more than that. Yeah. And uh, and then all of the orchestra, uh, symphonic orchestra, right? So all of symphonic orchestra learned the piece uh, for the accompaniment while we learned the words and all the songs and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we have like one rehearsal, right? We all learn it on our own, right? In every single class and every class period we go over and keep chipping away at it until we have one you know, one rehearsal where everyone's together and we all start doing it and it's like, it just, it totally clicks after a while. And then it's like the night before and everyone's really pumped and then we have it and it's like, it's amazing because you can just see so much talent in everywhere. Like you can, like, it's just like me with my friends singing, you know, a tenor line while there's just so much, like, there's great sound coming from everywhere and everyone's just like so close and like we spend time after the rehearsals and after the thing, uh, after the show and it's also great because there's also different um, like shows after. So we have one where it's all of us together. Mm -hmm. and then there's one where there's only orchestra and we have like the senior concerto and all that kind of stuff. But we also have different chorus things where chorale sang by themselves and hurricane, hurricane singers sang by themselves. So it was great because I was able to you know watch like the different shows within my own show. Mm -hmm. So it was great because I, you know, I, I loved seeing like Carson play. I loved seeing the whole orchestra just play. Well, also was able to see, you know, my friends and Hurricane Singers sing, and it was great how we could all work together to make one thing, but also branch off mm -hmm. and make different other. Did great. you ever consider like making a CD or a DVD and selling it? Well, <laughs> actually, um, we we did record the the concert and we we sell it to like the students in it, and we uh, we actually like, I actually have like the whole chorale CD. Maybe chorale we should CD. look into that, Mr. We Bechel. do record every concert. We've got a pretty wonderful library. That would be nice. So. Okay, well, yeah. I'm always thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all great. stars. <laughs> but no, I think you're right. Collaboration is, is a big mm -hmm. part of what we do. And, and we do it in big ways and in small ways and, and sometimes in unpredictable ways. Uh, sometimes we stumble into it ourselves. Um, we, we found some things uh, that are truly functional and great, like the art scala that we've been offering mm -hmm. the past few years. We skipped it this year purely out of logistics, but it'll be back next year, oh, good. Um, where we bring in all the performing programs together in one night, and we do kind of like a, you know, just like a, a short little glimpse of each thing. It's kind of like an appetizer, you know, tray of things, and we run that across the night. But then we find more substantial things that have come out of that, like for instance, for under that venue, um, Bomba and Jazz, mm -hmm. um, led by Tracy Vernon and Laura Rexroth, found that they had a lot that they could be interested in together and start mm -hmm. to find some collaborations there. Um, this fall, uh, we did a collaborative theater production with the Symphonic Orchestra uh, that was really exciting to us, and that was Midsummer Night's Dream. Yes. And, and that was really exciting. Which was astounding. Yeah, it was yeah. really <laughs> fun stuff. And, and it was exciting for us because we weren't the only ones that thought it was fun stuff, but we mm -hmm. got a, some good publicity of it. American Theater Magazine, which yes. is the, the professional's trade magazine in professional theater, mm -hmm. um, got interested, interested in how we were approaching the work mm -hmm. um, and in the nature of that collaboration and, and, and covered us back in January. And that's on a high school level. Yeah, and they, and they, they look after professional groups. Their interest mm -hmm. is not in high school. No, and that was such a unique production. Yes, yes it was. Um, and that came off of a product of um, work that I had been doing in my, I took a year away from school mm -hmm. uh, to go to grad school and found myself uh, caught up with uh, a theater company that was very near and dear to my heart before I ever had a chance to meet them. Mm -hmm. And coincidentally, they had arrived in Boston at the same time I had. And I spent the year working with them alongside going to school. Um, and so much of my education that year came from working with that group. And, and a lot of what I learned there, I very excitedly brought back here. And uh, Midsummer Night's Dream was one version of that. The, the technical name for what we did was a, a double promenade theater piece, which is a traveling theater piece where we had two separate audiences on strands running through uh, and around the school, indoors and outdoors, mm -hmm. um, as we divided the play between its two worlds, the fairy world and the human world. And then we had a bunch of orchestra members chase them around too and pro provide live <laughs> accompaniment and um, made a big run of it. It was, it was a lot of fun. It was amazing. It was really, really fun. And it sort of um, parlayed from outside <clears throat> over there? Is that the same sort of concept that you were? Very similar, whereas Midsummer was a promenade production, mm -hmm. that is audiences are being led places. Outside over there was what you call an immersive theater production where audiences are much more free. Mm -hmm. Miguel was in that. Yes, um, so, tell us a little bit about that, Miguel. Yeah, so maybe you should speak more than I should on this. Well, um, I guess one adjective for that show would be mind-blowing. Because <laughs> what, what really would happen, what was happening is I felt like no other high school was ever doing this at all. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was 
just the concept of him explaining it to us, when you explain it to us, I don't know, like sophomore year or something, it was insane thinking about the possibilities of what could happen. Because what happens is that it's like uh, we, we created a whole arc, a story arc between a bunch of different characters mm -hmm. and looping it three times and each loop is one hour, so that's like three hours. And each person would be, you know, doing the thing. And there's no words, right? Yeah, there's absolutely no there's words. There's a wordless production. Mm -hmm. And it's all through. I don't know how to explain the way we would interact with each other, though. Like, um, the, the, there were about, uh, in, in the teens, is a, is a cast in the teens, I forget exactly how many, uh, of stories from Ovid's Metamorphoses and Maurice Sendak's Outside Over There, which is where the name of the book is. We took the two worlds, those two narratives, and assigned characters, and each character had a, their storyline within that. Inevitably, those character storylines would cross and bump with each other. Mm -hmm. So a character, you know, Apollo from the Metamorphoses, might run into Ida from outside over there, and very quickly, all these you know crosses happened. Um, we did not use any vocal uh, work in it. It was all choreographed work, physical action mm -hmm. against a soundtrack, uh, and we did it at a location far away from the high school as well. Yeah, that's right. Um, the location we did it was Ashfield, mm -hmm. and um, at a theater theater place called Double Edge Theater. Mm -hmm. Which is a it's a it's a, such a great space because what's really important about this production and these kind of productions is the space and there's just such a more, there's just such energy in within that space is that it was so easy just to go and just create so many different worlds and with my like fellow actors and it was it was just really amazing and I uh, I think we got a lot of good really good feedback mm -hmm. and also it's cool because every audience member could have the exact well, actually not exact, but totally different experience from any other audience member because they could walk around by themselves or with other groups but branch off between anywhere they wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And it was great because we created worlds within that space so you could like pick up and read like Ida's diary while you know watching her interact with another character. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you could walk out outside and then go to like this window maze and it was just it was really great. I, I really love that production. So you're gonna look back on this memory and think that was one of the highlights of my high school oh, yes. dramatic career. Yeah, oh, des definitely. When you're out in Beverly Hills, <laughs> practicing your Oscar acceptance speech. Oh, I hope so. I yeah. hope so too, and I think that will happen. Thank you. Now I know Miguel is quite talented, but I know you've had a lot of young students come through your classrooms who have, are now fairly well known nationally and in regionally. Yeah, we've had some great success stories uh, through the school. Um, one of the great ones that, that keeps popping up, and indeed uh, just in the Times yesterday, is the playwright Annie Baker. Mm -hmm. uh, Annie graduated from the high school in 1999. I actually just missed her. I didn't get to work with her. Uh, John Worthen uh, was, was really the person that I think should take some responsibility for, for leading her off, at least. But Annie has become... Uh, an Obie and Drama Desk Award-winning playwright. Mm -hmm. She, uh, her play Circle Mirror Transformation was one of the most produced plays in America last year. It's actually up right now at Smith College at New Century Theater, mm -hmm. um, being done by that, that group. And one of our very recent alums, Maya Rivera, who mm -hmm. just walked the stage a few weeks ago, is the only non-equity actor that was cast in that show. So, and a, a weird curious fact on this, <laughs> when, when Annie was here at the high school, was the last time that we had done the production Guys and Dolls. Mm -hmm. And she was in the role of Adelaide, which was exactly the role that Maya was in this year. Was in this year. Oh, well, things are, are destiny is kind uh, yeah, of forming, are, I see. Paths are crossing. <laughs> so, so Annie's been a huge success story for the school, mm -hmm. and, and her work came right out of working with the drama teacher and, and finding that uh, you know a play on a page um, is very different than a play on a stage. Mm -hmm. And the ability to create a world through writing is a magnificent thing. Absolutely. Um, and so we found that across the way, we, we are sending off uh, an incredible uh, crew of musicians this mm -hmm. year, mm -hmm. um, whether we're talking Carson Marshall, who was on NPR's From the Top earlier this year, and was also uh, the, the, kind of head, uh, the concert master for the Boston mm -hmm. Youth Symphony Orchestra, uh, or whether we're talking about Libby Woodbridge, who was just on Broadway last year in Jerusalem. Uh, we, we we're walking a huge line of a lot of successful folks that are mm -hmm. they're getting out and finding that the arts are not only something that they did in high school, but really 
has a, a pretty deep meaning to where they're going in the rest of their lives. Absolutely. It's amazing. I mean, you have the Hurricane Singers who won WGBY's... Yep, Together in together Song in series. Song. Together um, in I believe song. the number is 44, and uh, Anita will correct me if I'm wrong in this, <laughs> but uh, 44 ensembles uh, across uh, the region from high schools to adult groups to younger groups all perform there. And uh, this year, the Hurricane Singers... Uh, won the high school category mm -hmm. and then all the winners of the respective categories met together and sang again and then they went on and took to the the first prize for of, of all groups kind it of the best in show exceptional so, they sang for the school committee one evening yes. and it just like you said it was mind-blowing it was just so beautiful and uh, just a thrill to hear these voices. Right. And I think only half of the group was able to attend that right. evening. And they're still gorgeous. They're still amazing. Yeah, and amazing. this is the same year that the Corral, the other uh, advanced uh, choral group in the school, mm -hmm. took a gold medal at the MICA competition, which is this right. adjudicated competition of, mm -hmm. of music educators. And, yeah. uh, so it's been a banner year for the choral mm -hmm. uh, program, certainly. But probably across all of our programs, I, I think we're feeling a lot of momentum in every single discipline mm -hmm. right now. Uh, for those that saw the Wind Ensemble concert at Buckley Hall just a few weeks ago, it's this magnificent piece featuring a commissioned piece that we were premiering on the East Coast. Um, that was this uh, beautiful work that was in memoriam uh, to a composer's daughter. The composer was a mentor to Laura Rexroth, and therefore mm -hmm. she got the commission, and it became this wonderful honor for us to do. Um, but also this incredible musical premiere that our students were up for. Mm -hmm. And that was a truly great thing. Bomba is constantly getting out in the community and connects all over the place and is one of the kind of key members in the social fabric of what we do. Mm -hmm. Does theater ensembles advancing so well. The string program is going, we're, we're feeling so much good stuff around the world right it, now. It's so strong. And I think you touched upon it earlier, Miguel, when you said that when you first got into this you know, um, group, that these kids, these high flyers, these superstars in mm -hmm. your eyes, you know, I think that's kind of the gel that holds it together. There's a true spirit and camaraderie when you walk into that auditorium or into those rehearsal rooms and the, and the practice rooms. And yeah, I don't think you get, get that really anywhere else. You know, there's something very special about you know, your talent and what all of you are able to do and produce, and it's amazing. Yeah, I, I can really feel that between all of us at, at Amherst Regional High School. We have. I feel like everyone there has a real good dedication and real love for what we do. It's mm -hmm. great. And a lot of inspirational instructors and teachers. Definitely. So, John, what's your vision for the future? Um, that's a great question. I, I think one part of that vision is um, continuing to build on this collaborative model, that mm -hmm. the more we can reach across the arts with each other, but also outside of our department and find ways to fuse with other me members of the school, mm -hmm. the stronger we are and the more integrated the program is and the more effective it is for students. Mm -hmm. And related to that, I think we're constantly interested in finding ways of bringing students into our program mm -hmm. that have no inkling that this is exactly the place where they might belong, mm -hmm. that they are a, a, either a nascent talent or something, or even if they're not, that this is the thing that could like grab them like heart and soul mm -hmm. while they're here. And, and really give them something new. So we're constantly on the search for finding ways to do that better, whether it's down at the elementary building them up or if it's across mm -hmm. at the middle or high school levels in other parts of the school. Well, we'd be happy to help you get that word out and find students like Miguel who want to jump in and really make a difference and, and do great things for our community and express yourself as well. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Any closing thoughts? We have about one minute left. Um, well, I just want to say thank you for everything you've done and uh, everything, just everything that the teachers have done at this school is just, it's just so amazing because the amount of dedication and work you guys put in is just, is just mind blowing, and um, and it makes me, really, it really wants me personally to try my best to make you guys proud because it's really you guys are like the biggest inspiration for us and I just want to say thank you. Right back at you. Wow. <laughs> that was really nice. And what a tribute to you, John. Well, I, I, I share the love on that. I think we really feel that we're all in this together. And we are. And once again, I thank you for joining me today on this show, Voices from Our Schools. I hope you come back maybe next year, Miguel, before you graduate. Mm -hmm. You could do a nice look back on your four years at a high school and you know, point out the high points for us and tell us what your future plans will be. Gladly, yeah. Okay, that's a, that's a promise. Awesome. And I thank you for tuning in today for this segment of Voices from Our Schools with John Bechtold and Miguel Paredes. Paredes, yeah. I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope you join me today and have a wonderful day. Thank you so much.